So leadership for the future is the, is the context that we're going to be working in, and we're going to be talking about leadership in a continuous improvement or operational excellence mm. framework. All of you, in one way, shape, or form, have committed to continuous improvement or operational excellence. Some of you are full engagement clients with us, and so uh, you're well down the road. And so when I show you the framework, you should be thinking, oh, yeah, we've got the framework in place. The question is, how are we leading within that framework? What are we doing to lead within that framework? Um, so the first premise that I want to try to put out there, let me just remember how to, how to do my, well, we can also do it that way. The first premise that I want to put out there is that leading implies moving from one place to another. So whether that's uh, physically moving, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, leadership implies moving uh, from one place to another. And so what I've shown here is, is the uh, journey that most of us have picked up and decided to take. Uh, where we are now is uh, described under the human and the operational. In the human area, problems are, we, we recognize problems through the mindset of problems are a pain. You know, the ideal appears that in the human, in a world-class healthcare system, a world-class uh, uh, manufacturing environment, problems are a blessing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at where we are now, where we need to be, and then we're going to look at how the uh, framework is in place and how that gets us, how that helps us move up that, uh, up that journey, up that arrow there. From a human standpoint, again, why are we using the human and the operational model. Well, the, uh, in, in operational excellence, the thing that we, we teach all the time is that there's a human and operational balance. And if you respect that, then uh, that's going to get you good results. So we're going to look at the human and operational balance in, in both cases. Current state, where we are now. Like I said, from the human perspective, the attitude is problems are a pain. You may not be there right now. And I may not be describing your, each and every person in your organization. But the organization as a whole, when a problem occurs, we still grumble and we still go, oh, crap, there's a problem. Okay, So our immediate reaction is problems are a pain. We uh, talk significantly at the center here about mo movement, making some movements from I to we to us. So most of you have seen our three-phase implementation model. In this first phase, we're looking for cultural change or transformation. In the second phase, we're doing some implementation. This is your classic uh, lean tools and things like that. And then in this third phase, we're trying to get to daily living. And when that happens, uh, we're making a movement in the human dimension from I to we to us. So initially in the human system, we're very focused on the individual. We're focused on individual success. Uh, we may be arranged in groups or teams, but even within those teams, there's a lot of focus on what, what am I doing and how am I succeeding. As you move out the curve and as you move along the journey here, the movement is to we, the recognition that you're on a team or that your team is a, uh, in a group of teams, a team among teams. And then finally, that there's really no difference between me, the individual, me on a team, and then me as a part of the whole, which is the, the big group of teams all knitted together. Okay, So in the current state, where we are now, there's a lot of focus on individual, individual success, measurement for individual success. So if I were to ask uh, Eric, um, where are you guys from? Appleton, OK. Hey, I was just out in Wisconsin last week. Um, but uh, if I were to ask you guys how you're evaluated, for example, uh, you probably have an individual performance evaluation that's done every year, right? And so and most of us do, right? Most of us have an individual evaluation. Well, that's appropriate, but the question is, as I'm e evaluated individually, how do I get at how am I performing on my team? Okay? Or better yet, how about if we're evaluated as a team? Okay? So, so we're making that movement. Also, from the human side and where we are now, as a whole, we're disengaged. So uh, we've had many clients come to us and say, hey, our biggest problem is, the, is that our employees are not quote unquote engaged. engaged. So that's the buzzword that, that's out there right now. Um, Gallup uses that, that word a lot. What does engagement mean? What do you think engagement means? You're new. <laughs> Okay, 
working towards a common purpose, fully uh, participating in their work. Those are the kinds of things that we look at. Uh, later on, as you go through this curve, you, you might be looking at things like number of suggestions per person per year, those sorts of things. But right now, they're disengaged. They come to work, they participate in work, but when they leave work, they leave it there. Okay? They're, they're not thinking about it. They're not fully engaged in it. From an operational standpoint, improvement is occasional down there, occasional directed. So we're told to make improvements, and we respond, the organization responds to make improvements. Uh, they don't happen naturally. Individuals' orientation isn't such that it's in a continuous improvement mindset all the time. So they, it's not as if they come to work thinking, let's make improvement. They come to work thinking, I've got to do my job, and I'm going to have a transaction with the organization today. But if somebody comes along during that day and says, let's make an improvement, then they'll respond. But whenever that stimulus goes away, what happens? They're back to not making continuous improvement. And continuous improvement's the wrong word, right? Because if it's, if it's sporadic, it's not continuous. So it's occasional and it's directed. And then uh, performance is sporadic. I'm looking around. I see a lot of successful organizations represented here today. So we know that you're profitable. We know that you're successful. But the question is, is your performance sustainable? Are you on a curve that, that's moving up and up and up? Or are you on a curve that kind of does one of these things? Hopefully mo moving generally up, but sporadic performance. Performance is sporadic. So where do we want to be? What does world class look like? Again, we're going to use the human and the operational balance. But over here on the human side, problems are blessings. So as soon as a problem occurs, there's a movement towards problem solving. Because we know that if we find the root cause to that problem, there's an opportunity for us to put that away for the rest of the organization. So Bruce, Indiana Regional, the whole health system, how many employees are we talking about? 1,400. OK, so 1,400. So this would be 1,400 people every day thinking that problem solving is, there, is part of their job. 1,400 people. And if somebody in the emergency department at Indiana Regional, at the main campus there, if somebody in the ED solves a problem, that can be shared learning across the organization. That's, that's what we're talking about here, problems or blessings. Under uh, the human dimension, team, community, and us. So back to the I, to we, to us. Not only have we moved from we to us, but we're also recognizing that the company doesn't exist in a vacuum, that the company exists in community with the community around it. So for example, where do you get your human resources from? Who's the supplier of your human resources? OK, Jim, you guys probably hire from the local area, right? OK, so machinists, or uh, what, what do you guys, what's your normal uh, floor worker? Where do they come from? Around the area. OK, so the producer of the raw goods for your human resources are the local school districts, for example, OK, in your case, or the local community colleges, where many of us hire some of our uh, skilled workers from. It may be the local colleges. But in any case, you're in community with the community around you. And so out here in world class, we, don't, we not only recognize ourselves individually as part of a team and a, of a team of teams, but also a, a company that's in community with the community around it. And therefore, must have some strategy, must have some, some idea about how to re interact with that community as well and to improve it. Okay? So here's a quick question to, to determine whether you're world class or not. Does your company have a strategy to help improve K through 12 education in your, your local community? If you don't, maybe you should, right? <laughs> if, if you understand that as being the provider of your resources. 